In a rainforest, there are thousands of different species interacting with each other. A jaguar hunting a deer, trees competing for light, earthworms breaking down old leaves. This is an ecosystem defined as a community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. I want to understand the living world, which is made up of ecosystems. But how could we study the complexity of a living ecosystem like a rainforest in a rigorous way? To identify consistent patterns of species interactions, we would need to compare and contrast multiple separate rainforests. And we would need to compare rainforests where similar types of species interactions had evolved independently to see how natural selection influences these relationships. Of course, even just surveying all the organisms in one rainforest is an unimaginable feat. Instead, we need to find something that is small, manageable, and self-contained, yet that still represents an entire ecosystem. Studying pitcher plants can help with this problem. This is actually a leaf that has been modified through evolution to form a cup that holds water. And inside is a tiny ecosystem. I use these pitchers as tools to look for universal ecosystem patterns. The pitcher produces nectar, which attracts insects, and they fall in and drown in the pool inside. Their digestive enzymes break them down and extract nutrients that are essential for the plant's growth. Now, these plants eat insects, but they also house specially adapted insects and a whole community of protozoa, bacteria, and fungi. There are predators, prey, and decomposers in this system, just as there are jaguar, deer, or earthworms in a rainforest. One of the qualities of pitcher plants that makes them ideal for looking for patterns is that they have evolved separately in different parts of the world. Three unrelated plant lineages have independently evolved these cup-shaped leaves that trap and digest insects. This is called convergent evolution. I study two of the three types of pitcher plants one in Southeast Asia and the other in North America. I have collected hundreds of these tiny ecosystems from pitchers in different parts of the world. New DNA sequencing technologies allow me to identify all the different organisms within each pitcher. I use Harvard's supercomputer to process millions of sequences, to analyze my data, and to quantify patterns. Months of analysis have led to results. I have found a strong pattern that seems to be driven by predator-prey interactions. Protozoa feed on bacteria, and in pitchers with more different types of bacterial prey, we see more different types of protozoan predators. Future studies will determine if this is a consistent pattern of multiple different ecosystems. But what other patterns can I find using a different approach? Here, each column represents the ecosystem inside a pitcher, and each color represents a different type of bacteria. This approach compares bacterial communities. I have found that the bacterial communities living in pitchers from Southeast Asia are more similar to the bacterial communities in pitchers from North America than they are to the bacterial communities in the soil directly surrounding them. I call this convergent interactions, which are interactions that are similar but have arisen independently. Unrelated pitchers on opposite sides of the Earth have somehow selected for surprisingly similar bacterial communities. How might they be doing this? One way is through acidity. I have found that the acidity of the pitcher fluid influences which bacteria colonize the pitchers. This, this can be applied to other areas. 
Because the, the plants can to some extent control properties such as acidity, they can curate the communities inside of them. The pitcher plant can be thought of as the plant's version of a human gut, which itself is a tiny ecosystem of interacting organisms. The microbes living in the pitcher help it to digest its food, just as our gut microbes help us. But I can grow these pitchers in the lab, and I can alter their properties, and I can see how altering these properties, such as acidity, changes what can grow inside of them. In this way, pitchers are model systems, and studying them can also inform how other hosts, such as humans, control our internal gut ecosystems. There are patterns to the organization of life. When you think of a rainforest or the multitudes of bacteria teeming in your gut, remember the pitcher plant as a tool for revealing patterns and connecting ecosystems, both outside and inside of ourselves. Thank you.